Hey guys, welcome back to yet another episode of the Breakdown Podcast, where I just discuss everything that's been going on in English rugby for the last week or so. Now, I know I've missed last week's episode, uh, and there's a reason for that. I wasn't looking to do an episode every week in the first place, but over the last few weeks, I've managed to squeeze out one episode per week. Some episodes being more successful than others, but all of which I've really enjoyed to make. Over the last week, though, there has been a few issues that are irrelevant for the pod- episode, sorry. Uh, but I thought it's best to put out one really good episode than a lot of little ones that a bit of a waste of time. Now, it's fair to say I'm a big Worcester fan, and this week I was lucky enough to go and see Worcester play Harlequins at Stoop, which, for those of you that don't know, is one of the few remaining stadiums I've got left on this list of mine that I haven't been to. I think uh, Rec is one of them. Uh, I can't think of any others at the moment. Uh, AJ Bell, that's another one, and Franklin's Gardens are the three that are missing out. I've been to the AJ Bell to see a rugby league game, but I'm not going to count that. Uh, so yeah, whatever the result of this game at Stoop, I was just looking to enjoy the day. So kick off, and actually, we lasted an impressive 40 seconds before conceding. <laughs> the try, oh my god. Came from a neat uh, in-air grubber from Danny Kerr, and which the Worcester defence can only watch, to be honest. But Hugard didn't really help causes when he uh, buggered up trying to put the ball up. Uh, yeah, I, I can't really say a lot about that. Two quick, two, uh, two quick kicks into that same corner, which put us on the back foot, and Hugard was obviously out of position. Uh, Quinn's then scored again through Gabriel Ibertoy. He's a hot young English prospect, for those who don't know him. Yeah, he's a bit like a a bit of a, a bit of a five year younger Tom Howe. Yeah, we'll go with that. But it wasn't his speed that made the try. It was a vision from Marcus Smith. And it was a complete and utter shambles from our defence. Jesus Christ. He and Inventor flipping out. These are the main culprits. A lack of communication and maybe an unlucky bounce of the ball put uh popped up for Ibertoy for a relatively easy try for a uh, Relatively easy try. I'm not saying I could have finished it, but I don't think I would have the gas to get on Chris Pennell. But anyway, uh, yeah, I think the phrase from bad to worse uh, can be used in this situation now. Venter failed to cover the blind side of a ruck. Mills was even pushing the guy out to cover that side. Brown saw the opportunity and went himself to run in Quinn's third try in 20 minutes. Now, I'm not one to encourage any fights here, but Van Velt's absolutely demolished this guy. I think it was Clifford. But anyway, I have to say, I'd love to have Van Velt on my team if it's any fights at all. After this little scuffle, Singleton went over for driving all from close range out. Now, one thing that did surprise me is that we didn't lose any lineouts. I was pleasantly surprised at with actually with how uh, much our line has improved over the last few weeks. We've gone from not winning any to winning them but giving them poorly down to the scrum half and then actually winning lineouts like properly like fam it's trained what you're paying off then on 34 minutes brown played a beautiful kick that anybody would be proud of they put jack clifton for walking no heem in sight covering his wing i'm not saying he had a bad game it's just for his standards it was a standard game can i say that for a standard, it was a standard game. Uh, yeah, we, we, we'll go with that. We'll, we'll go with that. Uh, I just felt, though, we could have just brought him in more into the game early on. Because I felt he would have had more of an impact, you know, running off um, Duncan Way a bit more on his inside and outside channels. And obviously, on in the second half, obviously early on, sorry, in the second half, he got that neat finish in the corner from a relentless pressure. 53 minutes, uh, yeah, no change in our defence. <laughs> a combination of poor positioning from Hugard, Wallet, Fatiloaf, and debatably lack of communication from all three made Care's try a lot easier than it should have been. Here you can see both Wallet and Fatiloaf are moving to, to their left. They should be in sync to watch any uh, oncoming ball carriers or any pick and goes. Wallet stops to watch the Care pick and go. For Fatiloaf, he keeps on moving which opens up the gap for Horwell to run through to effectively make it a three-on-two with the outside man. Uh, 
Fatty Lofa is in a completely different planet. He's watching Hobbit on the crash ball, and if he got to it, then I am certain that he wouldn't have stopped the try anyway, because he would have had momentum running at th that speed. And all of this little snippet of defending was done with no communication between the three of them. But yeah, the care try we start we started to play an awful lot better than normal. We started offloading through tackles, which led to uh, which led to but then to offload to Ted Hill. We, who did the same to Sam Lewis, put Josh Adams through under the sticks. And that was all we could ch took advantage of with Browns in a card. With Quinns back to 15 men, they were very quickly scored a Ben Tapuai through Ben Tapuai. Now, I get that this was a supply pass from Danny Kerr, but in my opinion, this was entirely down to Fatty Lofa again. He stepped out of the line for a big hit, but all he achieved was opening up a gap for Tapuai to run into. Even Lawrence here knew that this was Fatty Lofa's fault, but it wasn't going to change his role drastically. But next weekend's game against Leicester at home, we can't be make, making mistakes like that one because Leicester's an easily winnable game, I think, with a team we should put out. Now, on 71 minutes, we built we built on this offloan game that we were so clinical at when Brown was in the bin. Uh, Mills, Drew, Boyce, I think it was, and Clifford, I think, to give the ball to an onrushing Lawrence, who did a sublime offload to Michael Heaney, who finished off the move. Uh, yeah, James Lang scored from close range. Yeah, can't really say a lot about that. Relentless pressure. But there was still enough time for a Worcester beauty. Here's a full clip of the try, and I think it has to go out there with one of the tries of the season so far. Maybe not the try of the season, Oli Lance's individual try against Leicester is there at the moment. But this Tom Howe finish is putting up a good shout, I think. Now, there is a certain podcast that I've... Uh, it's called Fab Rugby. And I think they're quite good at giving neutral opinions from the club to support. But I'm sorry, guys. You spent 15 minutes discussing the Sarah's Leicester game and only five on the Quinns game. And if it wasn't bad enough... You even said Clifford's try was try of the week. I'll show you the clip now. Well, for me, that was probably the try of the week, and I I said this to somebody in the chat or somebody earlier on um, on Instagram. The chip from Mike Brown. I thought, I think it was Clifford. I think it was that scored off the back of it in the corner. I feel like that was a real cla classy bit of play and really visionary play from Mike Brown. And what planet are you guys on at the minute? Worcester started from their own 22 and still scored, and they don't get trial of the week now. And the trial of the week goes to bloody English. Moses' kick was under more pressure, and it was off his weaker foot. What more could a bloke do? Jesus Christ! And I think before I lose all hope in sponsorships and brands deals, I think I should just focus on the Worcester's new signings. And I think these are better than last week. Then we're in for a good week. Milani Nani, Milani Nani, Milani Nani, uh, Milani Nani, Milani Nani, I, I don't know how to pronounce his name, but the main thing is, he's a good player. I think if this is the big money signing the board were on about a few weeks ago, then their names have to, have to be written down and thrown all over Worcester or something, because this guy, this guy's class. I always think with new signings, why Worcester? If I ever get a chance to ask him, then I will, but... He must, he must be given a lot of money to come here. Like, I'm sorry, he's playing a Super Rugby in New Zealand at a far better level than we are in the Premiership. We are in a relegation battle. He should go to a club like in Leicester. He might not get into the team, but that's the sort of player that they want. So, I don't know why he's come to Worcester. A bit like Donald O'Callaghan. Why the hell did he come to Worcester? I don't know. Uh, yeah, we're struggling to stay in the Premiership at the minute. But on a more serious note, I think this is confirmation that Big Bryce, Mr Bryce Heen, is leaving the club at the end of the season. His contract is running out and Nane, that, this guy, he may as well be Heem's long lost brother or something. Look, they look exactly the flipping same. Game happening this weekend, obviously the Wales England game. Now, I for one think England will win just because of this guy. Look at him. What a beautiful creature. Last year he scored against Wales. This year I'm sure he'll be looking to do the same, especially with the form he's on currently. Let's ask him. 
Hey, Johnny, massive fan. Privileged to be speaking with you today. I know you don't have much time, but are you going to score against Wales this weekend? That's a big question. Yes. Well, guys, you heard it here first. That is the end of this episode. I hope you have enjoyed. Don't give Fabulary any hate or anything. They will probably become more successful than I am, and I could do with making friends, not enemies. I'll catch you guys later.